Well, happy Tuesday. Um, this is video one of what might be several videos to come in the near future as we go through our little project together. Um, I wanted to first start off by saying thank you for replying to my message. Um, I sent this message to about 150 people that I, I chiseled down from a list of about 3,000 contacts that I have in my life. And um, I've got a pretty extensive Facebook following and fan base and or a friend base and I've got um, several contacts with other social media sites and relationships from people back from my elementary school days up to people I met just last week and in that um, review of who my contacts are I thought who would tell a good story or who has the ability to really kind of get into a project and kind of find an angle or a different perspective on someone's Olympic journey um, to winning a gold medal and that's why you got an email from me or a message from me and thank you in return for replying. I'm going to start with a quick quote. This quote came from an Olympic coach I ran across a couple years ago and he got this quote um, from a jail cell when he was serving time, um, which is another whole story in itself, but it's a great story. But the quote reads or goes something like this that um, be careful of what you think because what you think becomes your words and be careful of your words because what you say becomes action or becomes your action meaning what you think about you know and kind of dream about or kind of plan makes its way to your heart and at some point it comes to your mouth and you, you proclaim or say certain things out into the universe and the universe listens to you and before you know it, that becomes action in your life and you start doing things and being a part of groups or start going to certain things or, you know, athletes start training more because they said, yeah, I'm going to be an Olympic athlete. Well, for us, I wanted to plant the seed in your head that you got the potential of being a, a, hell, of a hell of a storyteller. Um, and so a little bit of action or talking about it a little bit, before you know it, we're going to have a book out. And you're going to be a contributing factor in that book. You're going to write a chapter for me. And I say for me, but it's for us because this is our project. Um, I'm going to send out details in the future about what that project looks like. Um, I'm never going to ask a penny from you. It's not some scam or some scheme or anything like that. Um, at some point, if we sell a few books, you're going to actually make a few dollars. Um, but this is just something that I wanted to do to contribute to society in a positive fashion. And also I wanted to expose some friends and some people that I know, yourself included, to the world of writing. Um, even though some of you have fears about writing, put those fears aside. I'll take care of those. Um, I've got people in place that are going to help us out with your shortcomings, with your, um, uh, just call it your writing. Um, I just want your story. And so there's so many stories from so many athletes, that Olympic gold medalists, out there that I just that are just so amazing so I started doing my research I thought I'm gonna do this with some friends and some family and some other people and I got about 50 names that are are all gonna be receiving this video just like you um, my idea is to put together a bunch of short stories and some chapters about athletes from around the world um, from the last year from the last hundred years that have done something unbelievable um, to get from where they're at to that podium to receive their gold gold medal um, if you have someone in mind, let's get it cranking. Let's get working on it. If you don't have someone in mind, I've got plenty of ideas. I can say, what's your favorite sport? And you're like, ah, I like, you know, I like uh, you know, skiing. <laughs> well, do you ever think about this guy? No, I never did. You know, or what's your, you, know, you like swimming? Well, what about this guy or this gal or whatever? So don't have, put all your fears aside. We're going to get through this. We're going to tell a great story. Um, a couple things I need from you. By September 1st, which is about three weeks, I want to know who your athlete is, all right? So email me, text me, um, vox me, um, Facebook, friend me, or message me. Uh, if you know my phone number, call me. I don't care. My email address is seansan at yahoo.com. Um, I want to know who your athlete is for two reasons. One, I have to organize my stuff on my end the things that I'm doing. And number two, um, that will kind of give me the final confirmation if you're in or out. I'd encourage you to be in because this is going to be a fun project. Um, you're going to start writing whenever you want to. 
I'm going to send out videos that can help and give some ideas along the way. You don't have to respond to them. You don't have to listen to them, but if you don't want to. But I'm just going to, I've been through the process. I've written a book. It's out um, in the world to sell or to buy if you want. And I've got book number two almost done. This will be book number three for me. But this is our project. Even though I'm the kind of the lead on this, this is our project. We all have equal shares in this. We're all going to have equal responsibilities. We're all going to tell an equally cool story. One of the greatest books I've ever read about self-development and personal growth is by Jack Canfield called Success Principles. And he's got about 65, 70, 65 to 70 chapters. I can't remember exactly. A little bitty twist and turns and corrections and modifications and adjustments you can do in your life. And, man, they're, they're, they're easy to read chapters and they're pretty small. And, and, man, they have such a huge impact on my personal development as a, as a, as a person. So we're going to do kind of the same idea. We're going to write some um, chapters of some stories on some Olympic gold medal athletes, and we're going to tell their story. And I'm not looking for the typical story like, you know, Billy grew up in Texas and got to the swimming pool and swam a lot and became really fast, and he won a gold medal. That story's been told. I want to know about what Billy struggled with. I want to know about um, the things that Billy had to overcome and, and you know, struggles and heartache and relationship failures and financial problems and you know health concerns because man trust me every athlete worth his or her salt has had some kind of hiccup in their life um, and those are the gems out there and some of them have been told some of them haven't but so let's find an opportunity with so many gold medal athletes out there to tell their story it might be um, Allison Felix um, if you don't know Recently, she was told that with her plans to start a family and have a child, that she wasn't going to be supported by her one of her shoe companies. And they wanted her to work on her being an athlete. She wanted to be a mother. And she said, I could do both. And they said, you couldn't. She said, F you. And uh, she went on to this past Olympics, and, and um, she smoked the competition, won her 10th record-setting 10th medal. Um, what about uh, Jonathan Edwards, a British guy who for four different um, times tried, competed, qualified at the Olympics without winning a gold medal. On his last time at the Olympics, he finally won his gold medal. Um, another gal, her mind, her name's escaping me, but a shot putter. Same story. Tried like four or five times to win a medal, period. And she kept failing in the Olympics. Her first Olympics, she finished dead last. And she made it, she had the the, the stomach and the, the just the tenacity to go to the next Olympics and then the next one and then the next one before she finally medaled. Um, you know, one of my favorite stories with Billy Mills in the 60s growing up as, as a Native American in, in a very tough part of, of, of America going through some very tough soci social problems and, and political garbage and, you know, the... Um, Vietnam War and oil problems and just all kinds of society problems. This guy wasn't invited to the Olympic trials and he, he gets there through a default from someone else and then he gets to the actually the race which everyone including his coach said, ah, he, he, he's just happy to be here. He's got no chance. Well, he wins it. You know, and also in the 60s. We know Muhammad Ali's story and his plight for for um, social justice and, and you know human rights and some of his anti-war um, you know, efforts to, because he didn't want to go kill people. And he won a gold medal and became the famous Muhammad Ali. Well, people don't know about William, or excuse me, uh, Wilma Randolph, I think is her name. She's also from the 60s. Um, they don't know that she was uh, like one of like 20 children that, that you imagine all the hand-me-downs and the financial hardship that family had. Well, they also don't know that, or people don't know that she, that woman had polio. And she went off to compete and win a gold medal. So the stories out there are many. Um, the writers out there are few. The storytellers out there are few. And that's what your job is. My chapter, my contribution is going to be a guy by the name of um, uh, Matthias Steiner. He's a German power lifter. And he, um, I, you think of the things that derail an athlete, you know, injuries, one of them, financial hardships, one of them. Um, you know, you think back to the 80 and 84 games where. Soviet and some of their allies were boycotting the American games, and in '80, American some of our allies were boycotting the Russian games. I mean, how you to be an athlete and train your butt off for four years, and all of a sudden your your prime minister, your president says, "Ah, oh, we're not competing because we've got this political 
issue between us. <laughs> I mean, what the, you know, um, so some hardships have come to some athletes in some unique forms. Well, my guy, I ran across about a year ago, and his story, man, if, if you watch this YouTube clip uh, on Matthias and what he went through, and you think, how did that guy get to the Olympics and make it and get a gold medal? Um, and I'll tell you, what happened to him was his wife was tragically killed in a car accident less than one year before competing in the Beijing Games in 2008. And I don't know, I don't know how a person or a human stomachs that lose their soulmate in life, and then finds himself in the Olympics where he wasn't even the best power lifter, but his coach worked him through a strategy and just said. To hell with it, go with this lift. And he's like, I've never done that before. And he's like, let's do it. Why not? And he went out there with all the conviction in the world and 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 the thought of his deceased wife and lifted a lift that he'd never done before ever and became an Olympic gold medalist. And if you want to see a cool story, go watch that two-minute video clip of his gold medal ceremony where they're presenting him his gold medal and look at him holding the gold medal in one hand and a picture of his um, deceased wife in another hand and look at his face and look at his eyes that's a great story and so that's what I'm going to kind of get into I'm going to try tracking the guy down you know maybe ask him a few questions like I can I, I put this quote in my book or whatever and maybe you can do that through social media I mean there are the resources out there and the information out there about athletes from the you know the 30s um, in the during you know, between the world wars um, and uh, you know Jesse Owens story and you know some of the the issues with um, the Olympics during the wars and after the wars and you know I man the opportunities to tell some amazing things and inspire some people from your laptops is available I'm gonna help you with it I'm gonna guide you through it we're gonna get this thing done in about I don't know five to six months and by God we're gonna have fun doing it so um, that's my video number one. If you want in, I want your athlete's name sent to me, and that's all I need by September 1st. If you're not going to be involved, God bless you, and I won't think anything less of you. I'll still love you to death, but we'll just catch you on the next project. So until the next video or until September 2nd, um, I will see you soon. Bye-bye.